Matthew is going to talk about educating the New Zealand youth about STIs and the launch of the website booth of Just the Facts. So Claire is a clinical nurse specialist and project manager for the New Zealand Herpes Foundation and the New Zealand HPV project. And she has 25 years of experience in sexual health. She launched the website in 2015 along with her colleague Brett Crockett, who is sitting next to me. Welcome, Brett. And it's an online resource for New Zealand youth that talks about sexually transmitted infections and sexually, sexual health related issues. So welcome to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you and welcome and thank you for this opportunity to share with you the um, two years of journey that we've had with um, developing this website. And before I begin with any information, I'd like to acknowledge the vast team of people and organisations that have gone in behind to support this Papa, starting with Jordan Waiti's research and the urge, um, the challenge, the uh, encouragement from, from Alison Green about two years ago that if the STIF was going to do a website on STI, STIs and sexual health for consumers, how were we going to ensure that it reached the hardest, traditionally hardest to reach groups of Maori and Pacific youth? And she offered um, Pua Tapu, Nā Rebirth as Te Tariki Takapo. Um, and her, Jordan, did some wonderful focus group research before we even started to set us on the right path. So taking that um, focus group research, we then um, started the journey and engaged right from the very beginning with groups of youth from Youth Hub West Auckland, Youth Space Primary, Nanahine Health Trust, um, the Village Collective, not with the youth so much, but with their team of workers. Um, Pajat's team, people from all over New Zealand, and um, absolutely last but not least, we've done this in collaboration and couldn't have done it with it without the Central Health Society and two or three individuals within that executive that have really been alongside me and helping me all right. Um, just to uh, revisit the project description, um, we started on probably two and a half years ago now when we expanded to, for our model to include all STIs. We decided that the first the only thing achievable within our budget was the build website modeled on the previous and HPV uh, projects and it had to be consumer focused to so start from the bottom up rather than from the top down. Um, it would provide information on SDIs for public and healthcare providers and uh, provide easy access to up to date information and downloadable resources. So the process of development was and has been all the way through to um, conduct focus group research with the target audience that we wanted it to reach. Starting with Jordan, Brett um, Crockett is the creative um, genius behind the website and being my guiding light in um, guiding the focus group researchers, getting them accomplished and keeping youth on board as we went through. Um, to as the site, the, the look and feel of it, and the uh, creators for it were developed, they were taken to focus group research groups, collate the findings from there, and in consultation with health professionals, create the original concept to put back to those audiences to see which they like the best, test the contents, contents, uh, concepts through focus groups, fine tune it, and the content and the website delivery methods, and finally design our strategic launch, which happened in May this year. Um, I think that the website build and the focus group researchers went from September last year until um, April this year. Um, so we wanted to identify, as Jordan had done, but to build on that as the website was being built, the behaviours of young people, specifically, especially Māori and Pacifica, and based on that information, shape the creative and functional development of the website. And most of all, and most importantly, 
ensuring that it reaches, engages, and informs these communities. Um, the, uh, the focus group researchers were um, groups of youth between 14 and 21. They had a focus on Māori and Pacific Island youth that went exclusively, and had, they had a number of different cultures. Uh, and as I said, Youth Health, Youth Hub Health West, um, and Youth Space and Fongaray jumped on board. The coordinators were marvellous, and the kids were very, very enthusiastic. Four, we had four groups over a period of about four months, 32 youth altogether, um, facilitated discussions both single and multi-sex. Um, one area of the website that has been very, uh, seems to have great um, resonation with young women is the section on virginity and the hymenman. And Kathy Lowe, who's the you know, specialist that developed that information, had a, a focus group research just with girls to go through that section and talk about getting diagrams that were culturally safe and appropriate for them and personal questionnaires and collective group discussion. So here are the wonderful people that have contributed to this from these groups. Youth Club and Health West, and uh, that's more girls from Youth Hub and Health West, and Youth Space Bomber These are kids that would allow their photographs to be on the website and here in this lecture, and want to be and are proud of being champions for this website to help their peers. They're really team leaders in a way. So what did the research findings find out? Really exactly what Jordan's had and possibly expanded on that a bit. That these kids spend three hours plus a day online. They check their phones all day, every day. Sometimes after dinner they'll be up to six hours on games. And the internet usage amongst them was 70% smartphone, 20% laptop, 10% desktop, and Google was the preferred entry point. So that meant that any website that you build to reach this target audience has to be smartphone savvy. Um, the social media that they used was Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, and Viber. Twitter was too American and Tinder too old. And it's really interesting this because several health care clinicians had said to me, oh, you're going to use Tinder, aren't you? And they're like, oh, God. And this, this, this group of this community doesn't do Tinder. Um, online privacy was not a major concern, but posting about STI topics could have a positive, they saw that it could have a positive or negative effect. Um, who would they talk to in the case of concerns about their health? Parents would, would be their first overall um, go-to people, which was nice, great. Sexual health concerns would be directed firstly to the school nurse and then to a doctor. Embarrassment and social standing was a barrier. And interestingly, and I, I would like that, cross-examine Brett about what question he asked, that cost of health checks was not a concern. I would have thought it was, and we all know that many, many, many young people throughout New Zealand cannot get access to health care unless it's free. And that's the reality. So the, the, these kids probably all were going to free. They were all through YOS, in YOS clinics and support anyway, so they were getting their that all of that stuff through. So maybe they just thought, well, it's free anyway, so it doesn't matter, I don't know. Um, so what was their general STI awareness? Very, very <coughs> poor. Um, minimal awareness of STIs. Chlamydia had the highest recall on use. I've heard of chlamydia. Um, they have to go to find out information, and there isn't any much information taught. Little awareness about herpes, HSP1 and HSP2, that oral costals can go downstairs with oral sex. Um, physical symptoms only would be a red flag to seek help, and that's worrying because we know that most STIs don't have symptoms. Majority engaged with um, in sex 
would engage in sex without sexual health discussion or STI discussion, and all of them would like more information at schools and on campus. <coughs> um, so regarding their, how they would discuss if they had a sexual health concern amongst themselves, it would be a very guarded topic with close friends only, if then. They wouldn't share STI information across social media. Viewing the website, an STI website was deemed okay, even if possibly found out. Now that's interesting because um, the, there's always been this, oh, well, you, are you thinking of having a hide button or you should have a hide button? Well, these kids, no, they, it wasn't an issue for them and we haven't got a hide button. And that's just another great step towards making sex and sexual health be an open discussion. Um, and none of them would use um, anything other than an English website. Uh, so, the website preferences when they were given the original concept from two and a half years ago about that pretty little STI hub thing, um, and just the facts, uh, the visual of just the facts and another couple of options rank the highest. They love that, that, the simplicity of just the facts. Um, and it ranked highly against other websites, that they said it must have quick, easily accessed information was the highest importance. They didn't want the language to be too dumbed down. Certainly some words have to be, in brackets, interpreted for them, like the word uterus, but they might not know what that is, but if in brackets after the word you've got the sack where the baby grows or the womb, then people who don't know what uterus is will learn that that's what it is by reading the explanation. And trust was a high, of high importance. Trust was essential. What would give trust to the website was having the moniker of DHB or the Ministry of Health on it. Um, and they wanted images of Kiwi kids doing Kiwi things. And that's been a uh, challenge, but we're getting there. So from the initial concept brain of the SDI hub through the strategic review focus group research, we came up with the final brand of just the facts about sexually transmitted infections. Um, the website needed to have youth appeal, colourful colour imagery of New Zealand, there's videos working on that, um, information quickly and easily found out, language is peer moderated, now that's a, we're working on that too, by actually now that we've got the content in there, and Brett has had the content in front of one focus group research out at West Auckland. But we know that some of it is still a little bit, got some words that would, might not be understood. So I'm actually going page by page with 16 year old um, saying, do you understand this word? And when she doesn't, we come up with a word that explains what it is. So it's a work in progress. And search engine optimization and content of current keyword analytics. Now I'm going to hand over to so it was so here it was launched with all of that taken into consideration. And um, Brett, my creative genius and um, leader in this, is going to talk you through some of the post launch statistics and what search engine optimization is and how it's done. Because I have never got it and I still don't quite get it. But of all the website builders that I've worked with in the last five years, Brett is the only one that's demonstrated he truly knows what search engine optimization is and he does it. Other people will say, oh yes, we do search engine optimization, but I haven't seen any evidence of it until Brett came across my lap. <laughs> So the website was launched and it was supported by, um, it was uh, seven, eight, um, well it wasn't sent to 8,700 clinics I don't think, probably about 6,500 clinics got, or health professionals, clinics, every GP got a copy of the sexually transmitted summary guidelines with an A4 poster of just the facts and our herpes and HPV resources in May. Um, We've done a lot of website linking, which Brett will talk about, press releases, um, and ongoing brand awareness. We've got um, biggest hosters now, 
A2 and A3, which we've that just, just allowed us to print with these new images on it. Um, so if any of you want to take some away with you, I have far too many to live down here, they're up here or out there, please take them away. Um, and feedback has been, we think we're on the right path. We've had wonderful feedback. I loved um, Brent Thompson's from Outline. Um, you know, it's, I, I, but we want to know if we're not on the right track, what we can do better. Um, yes, so Brett, I'm going to hand over to you to talk about this because it's nothing, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> It's, um, it's always nice to have a beautiful website. I think many objectives when you start out is people like to have you know their bag of tricks and it needs to our website needs to look like this and it needs to look like that. And the, the importance of how it looks is often overshadowed by uh, <coughs> functionality of the website, what's actually the nuts and bolts um, and how, how it sort of works. So really what we do in, in the initial development phase of any website is actually look at you know, what's happening in reality, what people are searching for. Um, what search tools they're using, um, what paths they're following to get to the information that we might put in front of them, uh, and then we start to build the website. So basically with a sort of a foundation of understanding really, we construct the website to make sure that we're relatively guaranteed of capturing that sort of amount of search data. So um, a lot of the time that's looking at... Oh, thank you. That's looking at um, how people <coughs> how people search. So, for instance, chlamydia, funnily enough, seems to be one of the hugest search terms in, in the SDI industry. Um, so, people would search what is chlamydia. They'd also search for symptoms of chlamydia. Um, the, the third search term might be how do I get tested. So, what we how we construct a website then is around uh, making sure that we're addressing those topics directly. So that's in uh, key titles for each of the pages. Um, there's, there's drop down menus. You know, if you go to the chlamydia page on Just the Facts, for instance, you might see chlamydia repeated. You know, far too many times that you should, you know, from an English writing perspective. Technically, it's probably over, overdone, but from a search engine optimization point of view, it's just right. So a lot of the time we're sort of balancing out what's good English, English with really what's good search engine technology and, um, and uh, placing the website placing the website um, uh, into the right market. So a little bit of what that is, is things like what you don't see. So in any behind any website there's there's a lot of stuff that Google reads but no one else really does until you're searching for it. So there's um, things like titles descriptions and, and file names. So basically what we're trying to do on each page is get all of those things to sing the same tune. You know, so the chlamydia page, for instance, is highly tuned to just uh, certain kind of search terms. So the images that we're using on that page uh, will say just the facts about you know, chlamydia symptoms and treatment. So what that does collectively is anyone searching for chlamydia should find this page. No, basically. Uh, I used to live in, uh, in design and, and illustrator and Photoshop, and now I live in Excel spreadsheets and, uh, and data, because the data gives us direction about how to create the design. So here, here's, here's some of the data that we pulled from. So what we're saying here is, in a month, in New Zealand, there's 4,400 people searching for chlamydia. And what we want to be doing is, at the moment, after, after three months from launch, Just the Facts is sitting on, it's a 31st ranking. So if you go to Google and you, and you type in chlamydia, you won't, find us the, you won't find us on the first, second page, but you will find us on the third page at number 31. And so, Search engine, engine optimization is basically about uh, fine tuning the activity that we're doing incrementally. So <coughs> we review the ranking. Sometimes that's about looking at everyone else in the, in the playing field, the, the competitors we might call them, um, and then fine tuning the content so that we're you know we're raising it. We want to be first or third basically. 
Um, the site's linking, so we link in and out, so we're linking to other organisations. Uh, we've, we've got 138 clinics listed on the, in the database, so when you're searching for a local clinic, you're going to find uh, something in your region. Um, and there's 36 other links to other, you know, other support organisations. So linking is very important through a website. Some of the stats that are starting to come through, these are really just sort of to say that different parts of the website are working. You know, the organic search is about uh, um, people finding it just normally, so they're searching for it. Um, the referral network in the red there, that's about people finding it through uh, things like uh, other organisations. Um, we've got direct people searching for chlamydia, they'll come straight in, you know, through our organ pools. So, that's sort of just a healthy graph to say that all the parts that we're trying to work on are really. <coughs> we're starting to get some really interesting data. So this is quite quite fun in that uh, we can start to see the splits for the people using the site. So obviously Auckland's probably using capita, getting the, you know, cross which seems to be quite strong. Even Taupo for that three. <laughs> Keep going. Now the interesting thing is Alpine is that what we start to look at in the search terms is people using certain kinds of keywords like uh, 123 Clinic here, KFC, Wanderer. So what we start to do is opt optimise the website so that people find it through obscure sort of search terms like that. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> right. A couple more minutes maybe. Um, we are, <coughs> it's a continual process, so it's a, it's a line of evolution. We just keep, you know, we, we we look at the data and then we, you know, we react to it. So um, certainly the next steps are uh, developing things like video. Youth have said, you know, that's their primary uh, interest. You know, they like to spend time in YouTube. So we're going to be certainly addressing that in the future. Um, Optimisation is continuing. And certainly today the message will be about partnering. So really what we would uh, like to say is check it out. You know, think about how, how it could, you know, there's a relationship building uh, philosophy there, so think about how you know we can integrate with you, or we, you know, so backwards and forwards. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>